Um, I'm stuck here. Here, guys. Call back from the lead. You guys can listen. Literally take this call. This is Aaron. You spoke to uh, one of my agents about your potential move in about two months. Um, I know you wanted to get 900 for your property, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me a little more about um, that's that's all I really know about the about the move. I know you're moving in the same area. What's got you wanting to move? I just want a bigger house. Bigger house, yeah. We'd all like a bigger house. What's got you wanting a bigger house? Okay. All right. Yeah, the kids are getting bigger. You wanna, you want a little more space, and what's stopping you from doing that now? Uh, good question. Uh -huh. I haven't really thought about it. Uh huh. But I think it's just the size of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're kind of in like that beginning discovery phase of seeing what is possible at this point. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Well, look, if I could show you exactly what's on the market, what it would look like to like financially for you to do this and what we could get your home sold for now, it sounds like that's kind of what you're looking for. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Great. Well, look, here's what we can do. Um, I've got time today at four or six. We can go over exactly what's for sale, what that would look like financially, and if we did sell your house, how much that would sell for, and you can make some financial decisions from there. I got time at four or six. What works best for you? Uh, neither. I'm, I'm booked up all day today and through the weekend, so I could do it next week, uh, possibly. Okay. On my work schedule. And what's your work schedule like? Friday. Okay. I can do Monday at five or six. Which one? Uh, coaching soccer practice at, at that time. It have to be during the day sometime. Between seven and four. Oh, between seven to four, you're free? Uh, I'm open. I'm take the call. I see. Okay. Would you be able to hop on a Zoom or would you rather have this in person? Yeah, we could do Zoom. Okay, and you're saying, I thought, I heard uh, 7 to 4, I thought you meant like you were working then. You're free then? Well, I'm working, but I could, I could, I could do a personal Zoom. Okay. Between that point. I work from home, so. You want to do like 3 p.m. then? Yeah, try that. Okay. What's a good email for you, I'll send you a calendar invite. If I send this invite to you, can I count on you to be there? Great. I'll send you a calendar invite um, and a little intro email on me so I'm not just a stranger to you. Okay. And yeah, let's take a look at what we can, uh, what, you know, bigger property we can get you and your family into, okay? Okay, perfect. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Wow. That's, that's a natural. Hey. Natural. That unbelievable. What the heck was that? <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys ever see Wolf? Wall Street, like the scene where he's like, like, everybody looked at me like, I just discovered fire. Guys, like that's the beauty of the framework. If you just understand this framework, you can set any appointment. And it, it's it's just like clockwork. It's like so consistent. It's so repeatable. It's so replicable. So like, that's exactly what I'm here to teach you guys to do. Oh, that was a circle prospecting, huh? That was a circle prospect. Yeah. What did you guys learn from that? I love your tonality. It, you sound so confident, professional. It's like secondhand nature to Aaron. Someone would be stupid not to say, okay. You just gave him exactly what he wanted. Everything you, you asked him, he said, yep. I'll break down the call because it record my follow-up boss records all the calls. Hold on one second. Hey, this is Aaron. You spoke to uh, one of my agents about your potential move in about two months. Um, I know you wanted to get 900 for your property, right? So right now, real quick, um, and this is all covered on the follow-up section of the framework of conversion. When you're, this is technically a follow-up call and you want to do the follow-up sequence. You want to do the follow-up intro whenever you can, because the follow-up intro is like, it establishes, Hey, 
I'm not a stranger to you. We know each other somehow. You spoke to one of my agents about a potential move that you wanted 900K and blah, blah, blah. Like what that says right there is I'm not a complete stranger to you. I know what you want. Okay, I want to establish that as quick as I can. Okay, so in the intro, the motivation is in there. To establish like that I know who you are is you need the motivation in the intro. Yeah, can you tell me a little more about, um, that's, that's all I really know about the move. I know you're moving in the same area. What's got you wanting to move? What's got you wanting to move? Okay, so on a circle prospecting call or a follow-up call, like it's you want to go for like, what was the original intention? What was the original plan? What was the purpose of this? Why did you want to do this? What is your goal here? Okay, I, I want the motivation. I just want a bigger house. Bigger house. Why? For what purpose? What would that do for you? Okay, I can leave it at bigger house, but like I'll have way more leverage if I understand why he wants bigger house. Bigger house, yeah. We'd all like a bigger house. What's got to Bigger house, yeah, we'd all like a bigger house. There's my statement of acknowledgement, which I need in the call before I ask my question or it becomes an interrogation. Okay, so there's my conversational input that turns an interrogation into a conversation. Bigger house, yeah, we'd all like a bigger house. Okay, that's what liter that's literally what turned this into a conversation and not an interrogation. Wanting a bigger house. What's got you wanting a bigger house? Okay, bigger house, yeah, great, everyone wants a bigger house. What's got you wanting a bigger house? Okay, stemming of acknowledgement and then my question. Uh, we got got a few kids and kind of outgrown the house we're in. Got a few kids, kind of outgrown the house. Okay. All right. Yeah, the kids are getting bigger. You want to you want a little more space. And what's And there's my statement of acknowledgement, okay? You need statements of acknowledgements, guys. This is literally what keeps people on the phone and wants them to give you answers. Okay? People don't like staying on the phone with someone interrogating them. People don't want to give answers to someone interrogating them. I need to keep this a conversation. Stopping you from doing that now. What's stopping you from doing that now? Okay, I have his motivation. He wants to he wants to move into a bigger house because his kids are growing. There's the motivation. Okay, now there's two things you needed to call, and that's it. All you need are two things: um, motivation and problem. Okay, what is a thing that you want? Okay, what is what is driving you to do all of this? You know, a move is a very big decision, a big process. It's a long process. It's a it's such a commitment to do, okay? And like for an expired or for sale by owner, like you need to know, you need to find the motivation. Why the fuck did you clean up your home completely, get it staged full of furniture and then do showings for six months and you're not interested in selling? Why did you want to do it in the first place? Oh, because of that reason? Well, do you still want this, right? So you always want to know the motivation. I have the motivation here. I need the problem. What's in the way of you getting what you want? What is the obstacle that we need to solve here? What is a problem that we need to overcome or get rid of to get you this motivation? Okay, that's, that's what I'm asking. What's stopping you from doing this now? Good question. I haven't really uh -huh. thought about it. Seeing what our options are and what, what's available and all that kind of fun stuff. Seeing what his options are and what's available. You haven't thought about it, what my options are and what's available. So he doesn't know what's, he's does, I, he basically saying, I don't know what's out there. I don't know what's possible. And this is perfect. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, Steve? What, what would you have said if he didn't explain that? Because when he says, I haven't really thought about it, let's just say he left it blank. I would have said, yeah, Steve, what exactly do you mean by you haven't thought about it? Like what part of this have you not thought of? Okay. That's what I thought you were going to say. You are going to say like, what part haven't you thought about? Yeah. That's what I thought you were going to say. Yeah, guys, like, this framework teaches you to give people exactly what they want and solve the exact problem of what's in the way. And when you can extract these two things, you are literally saying to them, hey, I can literally solve all of your problems. If I can take away all of your problems and give you exactly what you want, that's what you want, right? And that's the pre-close. And it's, you can't say no to that. You can't say no to that. What would you? So that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so you're kind of in like that beginning discovery phase of seeing what is possible at this point. Is that right? 
So that's my statement of acknowledgement. I'm, I'm saying, hey, this is where you're at, right? In my, in my own words, this is, this is where you, I understand where you're at. I've put verbally, is this correct? And he's like, yeah, yeah, he understands me. Yep. Okay. Well, look, if I could show you exactly. So I have the, now I have the problem. He just doesn't know what's possible. Okay. I have the motivation and I have the problem. What do I do next? Anyone but Miguel, Anat, or Misa answer this. <laughs> what do I do close. next? No, not yet. Pre-close? Pre-close. I need to pre-close. You always pre-close. Always, 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 always pre-close. Okay? The pre-close is your proposal to this, your, your proposal to solve the problem. And then the close is, let's lock in that time. Okay, you can't just lock in that time. You can't just say, hey, let's meet. You need to give them a proposal of how to solve this problem. Exactly what's on the market, what it would look like to, like financially for you to do this, and what we could get your home sold for now. It sounds like that's kind of what you're looking for, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Great. Okay, so he said yes. That's what I needed. Yes. And after someone gives me that yes, I have to reward it with a great. When someone says what you want them to say, like, right? Yes. Okay, great. Always, 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 always okay, great that. Okay, perfect. Well, look, here's what we can do. Um, I've got time today at four or six. We can go over exactly what's for sale, what that would look like financially, and if we did sell your house, how much that would sell for. And you can make some financial decisions from there. I got time at four or six. What works best for you? So that's the close. Okay. Hey, uh, so pre-close is, hey, if I can help you get what you want by removing the problem, then so that sounds like that's exactly what you were looking for, right? Yeah. Great. Now it's time for the close. Then before you make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly how we can make that happen for you. I've got time today at four or six. What works best for you? Uh, neither. I'm, I'm booked up all day today and through the weekend, so. Okay, so I presented him two, two times, and he says neither works. And I don't want to, now, you have to be careful here, okay? Because if you're like, okay, what about Sunday at two? He says no to that. It's going to get increasingly harder for you to be like, Monday at four? You know, you're just like throwing out dates and dates and dates, and he's denying it. And the more he, he says no, the harder it gets to lock something in. And then it'll just, eventually it'll become, just text me your information, I'll let you know. And we don't want that. We do not want that. So I open it up and flip it on him. Hey, you tell me when you're free. When are you usually free? I don't know what I said. I could do next week, uh, possibly. Next week. Depending okay. on my work schedule. And what's your work schedule like? So what's your work schedule? Tell me about your work schedule so I can like understand it and, and like point out where the where you're usually free. Uh, I work seven to four Monday through Friday. Okay, seven four Monday through through Friday. Then I'm thinking, okay, well this guy's free after four then. Okay. Okay. I can do Monday at five or six. Which one? So uh, I'm meaning to avoid his work hours. I gave him an hour break after work and five or six. I'm coaching soccer practice at that, that, that time. It would have to be during the day sometime. Please. Okay, so I'm like, what the fuck? This doesn't make sense with what you just said. Seven and four. Oh, between seven and four, you're free? Uh, I'm open. I can take the call. I see. Okay. Would you be able to hop on a Zoom or would you rather have this in person? Yeah, we could do a Zoom. He said hop on a call. I don't want to do a phone call. I at least want to do a Zoom. Okay. And you're saying, I thought I heard uh, 7 to 4. I thought you meant like you were working then. You're free then? Well, I'm working, but I get, I get. I, I need clarification before I propose him more times. Because I don't want to propose him more times and then he says no to those times. Because, again, it gets harder. So I need more clarification. You're free those times? You can do a personal Zoom at okay. that point. I work from home, so. You want to do, like, 3 p.m. then? Yeah, try that. 
Okay. What's a good email for you? I'll send you a calendar invite. All right. So him giving me his email and spelling it out for me is a form of commitment. If they're not willing to give you an email that says either they don't trust you fully, or that maybe they're old and they don't have an email, but they might not trust you fully. Maybe they're just saying yes to get you off the phone. Maybe they're not like fully committed to this thing. Okay. So you need to sniff, you need to sniff that out and I'll show you in a bit. Jimmy, if I, um, if I send this invite to you, can I count on you to be there? Can I count on you to be there? Jose, if I set this up for you, if I set the, if I set this up for us, can I count on you to be there? Yes. Okay. Of course. And, and Jose, is there any reason why you wouldn't be able to make this? Sometimes I'll ask twice. Is there any reason why you wouldn't be able to make this? Uh, no, there shouldn't be any reason. Okay. All right. I actually did that like for an appointment for today and he flaked. So <laughs> I guess it doesn't always work, but like that, this is designed to like, if there is a reason why they wouldn't be able to make it, then you have to be like, all right, what is that? And that's an objection that hasn't, that's a problem or an objection that hasn't been addressed during the problem phase. It's another problem to get. Okay. Well, yeah. What, what exactly would be stopping you from a uh, meeting? Oh, uh, well, I might this. And then you have to solve that problem before you proceed. Okay. So don't be afraid to objection handle guys. Don't be afraid to ask for reasons why they cannot meet because the reason that they cannot meet is a problem or an objection and you need to handle it. You need to solve it or they're just going to flake on you. You need to, you need to solve or handle it. So you want them, you want them to give you the problem. You want it. You need it. Actually, you need it. You need, guys, you need to shift your mindset to like, I'm afraid to ask because they might flake. No, I need to ask because I don't want them to flake. My calendar is like structured in a way where like, I need everyone to show up because like, it'll throw off my schedule. I need, I need you to show up. Can you be there? No, why not? What's stopping you? Oh, because you, you're not really confident about the market because you tried selling last time and your realtor like really didn't do a good job and like you're left thinking, well, maybe I can't sell it. And now you have this like limiting belief that the market sucks. Well, me and my team sold four homes just like yours and just like instill some confidence and be like, if you can like objection handle and solve that problem in their mind, like, Hey, homes are selling your house will sell. And, and I, I wouldn't expect you to make a decision unless like it made complete financial sense. Cause if that objection is still there, they're not going to show up. Uh, I said yes to meeting with Jin, but I don't know. I'm, I'm still a little doubtful about the market. I think I'm just going to cancel. And they canceled because you didn't ask about it and then solve that belief that they have about the market. Okay. So make sure you are, make sure you are squeezing that towel, wringing that towel out of all the problems.